three horrifying true out of gas horror stories by Mr. Nightmare. Let's go ahead and check it out, guys. Here we go. Story one. This happened way back in 2005. I was 18. I was living in Uvalde, Texas, a very low income neighborhood, the kind you'll find sprawled out all over the place in rural Texas when you're not right outside of a city. The closest city to me was San Antonio. I was going to some local community college because that's all my parents could afford for me. One of my best friends from high school, Andrew, moved to San Antonio to go to San Antonio College. He was living in some small apartment a little outside of the city with a roommate. His girlfriend would also often stay with him. Since the city's only really an hour and a half away, I would visit him all the time. He invited me this one weekend to come crash for the night, so I took uh, my trusty old 1995 Toyota pickup truck. Nah, just kidding, the thing was a piece of crap. The gas gauge didn't even work on it. I'd have to always just keep track of when the last time I filled the tank up was, then reset the trip mileage. I took Route 90, which was a straight shot from Uvalde to San Antonio. I was on the road at like 3 p.m. on a Friday, and there was no traffic at all. I got to Andrew at a reasonable time. His girlfriend wouldn't be getting there until tomorrow, so tonight we were going to go out. We stopped at a liquor store, and we drank in his apartment for a while with his roommate. Then the three of us went to this dive bar that would kind of look the other way with fake IDs. That was basically our night. We got back to their apartment around 2 a.m. after getting food. I slept on the couch. The next day would have almost been the same thing, but Andrew and his girlfriend were having issues all day. Hey, Ian, thank you so much for the $60 donation, man. You must have sent that when I was off getting a drink. I just noticed that. Ian Walsh, thank you so much for the donation, man. You said, how is your kids? How is your family? Are kids dressed for Halloween? Yeah, my kids got some costumes for Halloween. We'll go trick-or-treating Tuesday night. My son's name is Ian, so thank you, Ian, uh, for the donation. Appreciate it, man. Family's doing good. And as the two of them got drunker as the night progressed, she started yelling at him in front of me. It got really awkward and uncomfortable. Oh, dang. I didn't really have much to drink that day because I was already iffy about Thank you, Maggie. the night with her Yeah, there. I just saw it. I eventually decided I would just head back home. I said goodbye to everyone and started my journey home. It was very late at night. I want to guess midnight. Well, thank you so much, guys. I'm at $337 of the $525 to get, a, to get that new Xbox. So we are well over the halfway point. Thank you so much, guys, for the support. Maybe a little earlier. Route 90 was deserted at this time, so I would fly, or fly for my pickup standards. But suddenly the engine started sputtering. I felt my heart completely drop as I realized I forgot to fill up the tank. I slowed oh, down. Oh, gosh. It was too late. The engine cut. Oh, no. I pulled to the side of the road and tried starting it a few times, but it did no good. I took out my cell phone, which was... Yeah, that sucks. Running out of gas? Ugh. Only happened to me one time, but it freaking sucks. Equally as shitty as my truck. I tried to get a signal. No shot. I couldn't even call for help. I had to just put my hazards on and hope a good Samaritan would pass. You wouldn't believe how long I sat in the side of the road before seeing headlights. I waved my arms as the car approached, but it zoomed past me, ignoring me. This happened again after another ten minutes or so. I was starting to feel hopeless, like maybe I should just sleep in my car and wait till sunrise to get help. Uh, I don't know so if that's, that's safe, I man. Do. I got inside my car, took the key out of the ignition to cut the battery, and just angled my seat back to go to sleep. I would hear the occasional car zooming Dang. past me once every 10 minutes, but it didn't feel worth waving people down in the dark. It seemed sketchy for myself and to the people in the cars, but when I was starting to actually drift away to sleep, a car door closing from behind me woke me up. Oh, gosh. I looked gosh. in the rear view mirror and saw a car pulled up behind me with its headlights off. I turned around now to get a better look. There was some big pickup truck, but I couldn't see anyone inside of it. Nor did I see anyone outside of it. Yo! Maybe someone pulled over to help. I got out of the car and said excuse me to no response. 
I walked closer. That's to That's weird. Someone pulled up behind him with with the headlights off and he he doesn't even see anybody. Where where the hell did they go? The truck just to confirm no one was inside. Then I walked back to my car. This was weird. I looked towards the trees on the side of the road. Maybe someone was pissing in the woods. I went back inside of my car and locked the door. This was just too weird. Suddenly there was a tap at my window. I jumped. I looked to see a man looking down at me Yo. into the car, smiling. I didn't do anything yet. He said, hey buddy, need a hand? I lowered the window a crack and said, hey, I ran out oh, of good gas. Good night, Marissa. The man said, that's quite the predicament. Step out and give me a hand with this real quick. When he said this, I thought he meant help him with a gas jug to fill up my tank or something, honestly. And so I stepped out of the truck and shut the door, expecting him to lead me to his truck. But he stood there, looked down at me because he was much taller, still smiling, and said, I need you to empty your pockets, please. It took me a second to process what he meant. I was literally a broke college student what? driving a piece of shit pickup truck. I wasn't about to get robbed of the only cash I had and my phone. I ran for it in the direction of the trees. I'm small but fast. I turned around and saw he was chasing after me. Oh, hell no. Once I made no. it into the trees, I zigzagged all over the place until I seemed to lose him. Then I crouched behind a big tree to catch my breath. When I heard him approaching closer, I quieted my breath. I heard him say out loud, I'll kill you, you piece of shit. I don't know if he was just saying oh it Oh my god, talk about bad luck. First you run out of gas. Then you're just trying to sleep in your truck and then someone pulls it behind you and tries to freaking rob you? Talk about a bad freaking day. Out loud out of anger, or if he wanted me to hear it. But I was too scared to move. Even after I heard his footsteps move away, talk I didn't Talk about move. a bad day. In fact, I stayed in this position the rest of the night eventually laying behind this big tree up until dawn. I went back over to the highway to my truck, and the truck behind me was gone, but my truck's doors were both open. I found that my glove box had been gone through and completely emptied of anything oh somewhat Oh my valuable. god! My flannel hoodie was also taken, good night, Nathan. had something in the pocket, I'm sure. I finally managed to wave down a good Samaritan, and he gave me a ride to the closest gas station. I bought a fuel can, filled it with gas, and the man brought me back to my car, where I filled my tank just enough to drive the truck to a gas station to fill up. At complete. least this guy had, a, it sounds like he had his wallet and his phone in his pocket. So the guy went through his, you know, his dashboard, his glove compartment and other stuff in his truck. But this college student, at least it sounds like he had his phone and wallet when he ran into the woods. So... Your phone and your wallet are probably the two most important things. You normally just have paper and a bunch of junk in your glove box, you know? Then I went straight home. This was a real-life learning experience for me, that there are bad people out there who oh, will try yeah. to take advantage of you when you're in a vulnerable spot. But there are also good people, like the man who helped me. Yeah, and your keys. True, Chip. Oh, I think so, Kenny. When I was 18, I was very immature and naive. I was kind of a jerk when I was on the road, honking whenever I got impatient, borderline cutting people off. Looking back now, it was very stupid. And if I ever have kids, I'll be that much more up, strict Barrett? with them as far as their driving. <laughs> that being said, I so did So he pretty much just admitted that he's an asshole driver. <laughs> I have a lot for someone my age. I went away to school, five hours away from home. No matter what day of the week, traffic always gets atrocious the closer I get to home. So during breaks, I'll drive home at night to avoid this. It goes from a four to five hour drive down to a three hour drive. It was the beginning of winter break, as the fall semester just ended. All my friends left for home on the same day. I just waited till later on in the night to head out, because there's nothing I hate more than traffic. True. I used to drive a Mazda 3 that I would- I would rather drive at night sometimes when it's just- quiet and there's nobody on the road it's much more peaceful than busy traffic during the day guys we're at 88 likes make sure and hit the like button we can get to 100 likes on the stream beat the ever-living crap out of and admittedly i used to be known for driving my car to a near empty tank consistently people would comment on it whenever they'd be in the car. not me whenever i'm driving it gets down to a quarter tank i normally fill it up 
or put it to the halfway point. I don't like my gas gauge getting too low. Car with me, and I'd always assure them that the car would still have at least 30 miles to go even after the needle would hit E. I found out the night I was driving home from school that I was wrong. I was only like an hour into my drive on the interstate. The needle was on E, and I was pushing my luck, waiting for a gas station sign instead oh, of looking no. up the nearest one on the map. Yeah, I hate that. I, I would rather put gas in the tank when I still have like a quarter tank than like be all stressed out. I'm going to run out of gas. That's too stressful. The car started making these yeah, weird cryptic, sounds me too. And jolting. And that's when I realized I may have actually run the tank empty this time. I got off the first exit ramp and hoped it would lead right to a gas station. This exit was dark though with no street lights and there was just woods on either side. Oh, hell no. I was scared no. to slow down and lose my speed because I didn't know if I'd have enough gas to find a gas station. I blew through the stop sign at the end of the ramp and made a sharp fast turn on the intersecting road, which was another dark road surrounded by woods. Revolving potato? Okay, just get a screwed. new car. <laughs> the car eventually came to a stop and the engine died. Things only got worse when I took out my phone and saw I had no bars. I have T-Mobile, which is the worst possible reception anywhere oh, far from a major no. city. I tried calling 911 because I was stupid and thought that 911 works even without reception. Of course, it didn't. I was terrified because I didn't know what to do. I turned on my hazard lights and just waited for someone to pass by. It was a long time before I saw headlights approaching. When I did, I flashed my headlights at them, and they passed me, made a U-turn, then pulled up on the grass oh, behind Oh no. Me. I didn't know who- Why can't it just be a good person? Like, oh, I'll- the gas station's up the road, I'll get some gas for you, give me a little bit of money. It always has to be some bad situation. Getting out of that car, though. I was an 18-year-old yeah, defenseless girl. I just cracked the window down a little bit as this man approached my car. Yo. I told him I need help. I ran out of gas. He offered to give me a ride to the nearest gas station. He was this bald and guy with glasses on. He kind of looked trustworthy. I had no other apparent option. He kind of looked trustworthy? Ugh. ...but to accept his offer. I got out of the car and followed him to his car, making sure to lock my doors first. His car was a black Honda year probably at 2010. It smelled funky in his car. I couldn't pin what the smell could be though. He banged another U-turn and started driving in the direction he was driving before. He made conversation with me, asking where I was from and basic questions. I was honest with him that I was driving home from school. He said he lived in the area and that they don't get too many out-of-towners getting off the oh, interstate just, in this quiet little town. Is he town. about to kidnap her? The route we were taking lacked any buildings anywhere. It was just woods everywhere. I asked if he knew of any gas stations, and he said, yeah, just a ways up the road. I started hearing bumping and thumping coming from the back of the vehicle. What? It like the trunk. At first, I thought what? it was just bumps in the road or a loose object in Does the trunk. Does this dude have somebody else in his freaking trunk? Oh, no. He seemed to keep talking and talking, like he wouldn't stop. Oh no. Finally, we got to a sort of town looking area. There were some lights and buildings at last. A diner and a few small houses. There was a red light at the first intersection since I got in his car. We came to a stop, and for the first time there was silence. And then, I heard the unmistakable sound of someone screaming in the trunk. Followed by thumps and bangs. Oh my god! I looked at the man who looked at me. In a split second, I unbuckled my seatbelt, opened the door, and ran, while at the same time he tried grabbing me and pulling me back. She's lucky, because there's a way people can mess with the lock on the passenger door, and the door handle won't work. She's lucky he didn't do that. What if she went to open the door and the door wouldn't open? There's a way that I, I don't know how they people do it, but like with a door, you can open it from the outside, but once you're inside and you shut the door, you can't open the door from the inside like a child lock. She's lucky that door didn't have a child lock or something on it where you couldn't open the door. Oh my God. Back into the car. I heard him get out as well. But instead of chasing me, he ran to close his passenger side door, and then I heard him floor it down the street. I ran into the diner and asked for help, making a scene. I used their phone to call 911. 
I waited there. It became this whole huge thing, with multiple police showing up to the diner to take a report. Given the gravity of the report that I was making, that I heard someone in the trunk of the car, they had to get every last detail for me about the man's car, his appearance, and where he picked me up. I was also given a ride back to my car so that they could also include the pickup location in the report. Oh, man. It also helped me get a hold of AAA, which eventually would come to my location to fill my car with gas. This was overall the scariest experience of my life. I was shaken to the core the whole rest of the ride home. I hope they found that man. I, I did, Isaiah. I trunk is still alive today. For all I know, that man could have been bringing me to his house or somewhere else. I was just lucky I had a chance to get out at that red light. So this this guy already had someone in the freaking trunk, and then he picked up this other girl. She's freaking lucky. Poor person in the trunk, I though. Live in Burke County, North Carolina, in Morganton. I'm used to the quiet lifestyle that comes with living in a rural place. You get some weird characters here and there, but it's usually nothing too bad. I own a nice plot of land with my husband. My work schedule fluctuates. Sometimes I work days, sometimes I work nights. This happened on a night that I was on my way home after a night shift, so it had to be like 3 a.m. Damn. My phone was almost dead, I was hungry, I was tired, and I just wanted to get some food and head home. I stopped at the gas station to get $10 worth of gas and also a packaged sandwich, which I proceeded to eat inside the gas station cafe. Some sketchy guy was eyeing me for a little until he left the building without buying anything. Ugh. After eating, I went outside to fill up the gas, and then got back in the car. The smell of gasoline was extra pungent for some reason. These roads are very dark and twisty at night, so I was driving slow, especially since I was tired after a long day of work. Then something unexpected happened. The needle on the gas gauge suddenly dropped to E, and the low gas light came on and beat. Did that creepy guy in the gas station puncture? puncture her freaking gas tank she just got gas and all of a sudden she said the smell of gasoline was pungent or stronger than normal i bet the guy cut the gas line he either cut the gas line or he punctured her freaking gas tank while she was inside and now guess who's following you there's going to be someone following her oh no I had no idea what was going on. I'm not a car person and I'd never run out of gas before this. Plus the needle just suddenly dropped. I thought at first that the computer was glitching. Yeah, Nathan, so that's what I'm thinking. Restarted the car. You stabbed the, the hole in it so we could e. catch her later. I tried to continue driving, but the engine died. I started having a panic attack. I called my husband first thing, and thank God he picked up. I asked him how did my car run out of gas after I just filled up? And as I got out of the car, I smelt gasoline. I yep. told him this, and he said it sounds like I have a leak. He told me he'd head right over, and he'd call oh, a roadside thank assistance God. company. She got a hold then of I heard her a husband. Car coming with no headlights, and suddenly it stopped, not far behind my car. I told you guys. I suddenly thought to bring up that sketchy guy who was watching me at the I gas station. Told you he and punctured the gas tank. There was a chance he did something to my car. My husband's tone suddenly changed to sounding more concerned and worried. He said, yes, there's a chance that he may have cut my fuel line. Yeah, I didn't know what that meant. That's what I, I said, I the fuel to line. I took my keys out of the ignition and shut the door and locked it so that the headlights would turn off. My phone was on like 2%, so I told him to text me when he's close. Oh, nice, Kenny. I ran Kenny. off the road and towards <laughs> the first house I could find. I ran down the long driveway and up the property to the nice, door. Nice, Ian. All the lights in the house were... I was work at airport Monday is my last day of my... Because of seasonal, I will be... Have party, but my job is great. Yes, yes, yes. Heck yes. Nice, Ian. Again, I said earlier, Ian, thank you for the donation, man. I, I think you sent the donation when I was getting a drink, so I didn't see it at first. <laughs> We're off. I still rang the bell multiple times anyway. Eventually, a light turned on, and then the door opened. A man in his 60s opened the door. He looked like he was just woken up. I asked him to let me in to hide and charge my phone. After a bit of explaining... He opened the door fully and let me in. Oh, thank God. I asked him for an iPhone charger, and he said he'd go look for one, then asked me to take a seat in the living room. I sat down. Thank God for this nice scrubs, guy. Feeling a mix of emotions. The man called out from the kitchen asking me if I wanted some water. I said yes, please. 
little did he know, I saw his reflection in a mirror in the living room that what? gave visibility into the kitchen. I saw him fill a cup with water. Then I know for a fact, I saw him drop something into the water. He walked out of view of the mirror, but the faucet was still running. It ran for a solid 30 more seconds before he turned it off. He came This lady can't catch a damn break! Some creepy guy at the gas station was following her, probably cut the fuel line. She goes up to a house for help. Some man opens the door and now some dude's trying to freaking put drugs in her water. This lady's having a fucking bad night. Excuse my language. Yeah, the good two for one deal. My God. Came back into the living room with a glass of water and handed it to me. I think what are the odds she runs into two bad people? The guy at the gas station and now this random house. This like 60 year old guy is trying to freaking roofie her water. Oh, this is not a good luck. Good luck for men. <laughs> Thanked him and he sat down and just looked at me. Then asked me to explain the situation. Yo. Again. I replied to him I just really needed charger so that I could contact my husband. He said, oh right, and went upstairs. I checked my phone, and it was on 1%. I used that remaining battery to send my current location to my husband just in case. What are the odds of that though, guys? Like one in a million? Something bad happens to you, you go to a random house for help, and this person's bad too? I feel like the odds of that happening are very low. Then smelt the glass of water. And although it didn't smell like anything, I knew he put something in it. Now I had to make the decision of whether I should leave or not. On one hand, I needed to charge my phone badly. On the other, I was 99% sure he did something to this water. Wow. I heard him walking back down the stairs, and he said he doesn't have any iPhone chargers since he has an Android. Oh, After yeah. he said this, I got up and walked straight for the door. I'm not an idiot. Once outside, I ran back down the driveway to the road. I felt like throwing up. I couldn't believe two separate potential incidents from That's two different crazy. men happened in one night. That's crazy. Two random men and both of them are freaking bad people. That's crazy. I crept along the side of the road behind the trees. I took out my phone and sent my updated location. And right around now was when right, Courtney. <laughs> I waited for until I saw freaking Leatherface going to come running out of the woods, Courtney. <laughs> Some old guy answered the door. Familiar headlights of my husband's truck. I went out waving my arms, and thank God it was him. I got inside the truck and let all my emotions out, crying to him about what I just went through. He brought us to my car, and there was no longer a car behind mine. My back window was shattered, though, and it appeared someone had gotten into the back seat. But nothing of high value was left in my car to steal anyway. Oh, man. Our battery was also now dead. And I told my husband about the man who tried to potentially roofie me. He was so furious he wanted to go break down his door. But I told him no. Let's just wait for the tow truck to come. We waited quite yeah, a while. Yeah, because unfortunately she left that guy's house. The husband was so mad he wants to go break that guy's door down. But the guy probably took the glass, dumped it down the drain. Now there's no proof. The police show up. There's no proof that... He was trying to roofie her. That was his intention. So, unfortunately, without any proof, the old guy could play dumb. I just got her a glass of water. I was just trying to help her. You know, I, I didn't do anything to the water. Without any proof, the police can't do anything. A while before it came, my car was towed to my dealership, where they would take the car in the next day. What's my up, Darius? Right. My car was vandalized, and the fuel line was Hell cut yeah, completely. Courtney. Thank God I was off the next few days. The fuel line was cut, yep. Because I needed some time to mentally recover from this night. The idea that twice in one night, I was almost a victim of some sketchy men I just couldn't get over. Guys, that's crazy. I, I haven't heard a Mr. Nightmare story like that, I don't think ever. Where there was a bad situation, the person went to get help from a completely different person. And that person was also not a good person. Charlie says, I'm pretty sure it's a team. 
I think the guy at the gas station and the old guy at the house were two completely different people. What do you guys think? I don't I think the guy at the gas station and the guy at the house were I don't think they knew each other. I think there were two completely different people. I think unfortunately both of them were just both sketchy individuals. <laughs> But who knows? Who knows?